Well, I loaded up the polk. It's a, a, a northern word for a, a sled. It's the same one that I used when we went to Minnesota to the frozen butt hang. The problem is, if you notice, it's sitting on grass. The little bit of snow that we did have melted. And all week long, they talked about it was supposed to rain turning into sleet, turning into snow with accumulation tonight. Uh, now they're rapidly changing their minds and we're probably gonna get a little bit of rain, maybe a little bit of sleet, and if we're lucky, a few flurries. But I'm not gonna let that stop me. We're gonna go ahead and uh, go out for a solo, overnight, modern bushcraft adventure. Here we go. Well, this is a spot in between two fields back on a neighbor's property. That's the south field, and there's the north field. And then in that direction is all state property. If you listen carefully, can hear the interstate off in the distance and it's woods all the way to the interstate and on the end of the side of the interstate is all coal mine property so this is a pretty wild area if you think about it because unlike a uh, national forest or a state park nobody comes back here except the landowner and he comes back here very rarely and then the farmer that has the property rented other than that, it's just the animals in the woods. Okay, as you know, I brought the polk this weekend. <laughs> and I guess basically I'm car camping without the car. I decided to uh, try something different. Instead of the old trusty hammock, I dug out a backpacking tent from years ago and thought that I would just set up a, uh, a uh, shelter using the tent and a tarp and do some bushcrafting but I'm gonna call it modern bushcrafting now, we'll get into that a little later but that's the area that I'm gonna go it's fairly flat got some trees so I'm going to uh, set up the camera and uh, commence to putting up the shelter Spoiled. You don't have to worry about all that with a hammock. Alright, here we go. You know, the fun of uh, setting up this type of uh, shelter is the adventure of just figuring out how you're going to set it up. Which way is the wind blowing? Where's the rain going to come from? Uh, good level ground. What type of configuration do I want to set my tarp in? You know, the tent, the tent is pretty much the way it is, and it's not going to change. However, the tarp that you use in conjunction with it, not the one that came with it, but just like a uh, 12 by 16 or a, you know, or just any standard tarp. That's where, how am I going to set that up? That's where you figure out the actual protection from the foul weather. And I've got an idea of how I'm going to do it, and I think it's going to work pretty good. now for five years so this tent's probably about 
seven or eight years old. And I haven't slept in it, gosh, for at least five or five and a half years. But it's a nice tent. It's just heavy. It's like most tents, it's just heavy. All the lightweight modern tents utilize hiking poles and all the tarp shelters and tarp tents that you see on the market they utilize them just as, just the same So there you have it. I'll give you a tour in a few minutes. Okay. As you can see, it's pretty well protected. Got some ventilation on this side. The wind's going to be coming from this direction, probably right over that corner, the far corner. So that will help keep the condensation down. And you can see that there's nothing sticking out anywhere. Low profile, wind can blow, not cause much issue at all. And now, it's time to set up the fire reflector. <laughs> Okay, before it gets too dark, I want to show you this uh, fire reflector that I built. You know, bushcraft, if anything, is common sense. And, you know, it, it's not difficult. It's just a little bit of common sense. I didn't want these smaller logs. I didn't want to cut a bunch of big, heavy stuff. So I used some fairly small because, oh my God, there is just wood down everywhere here. It took me about, <laughs> what, 10 minutes to gather that much wood, and it only took me maybe 20 minutes max to completely build this. Now to stabilize it so that it doesn't fall back, you can see I've put a stick there and I've run it back here, and I drove, I've got an anchor here, an anchor, 
right here by driving this in the ground and then one on either side so it couldn't flip over. Now what that's done is that's made this nice and strong. And then, you know, I, I watch all these videos and I see people and I've made reflectors before and I always thought, you know, if you're worrying about heat and it's going to be cold and you want it to radiate back onto you, why not just get a couple pieces of aluminum foil? You know, it, it doesn't weigh hardly anything. And that's two two foot pieces, basically. You know, okay, let's say it's five foot of aluminum foil, maximum. And it's going to reflect back onto my vestibule that I have built. And regardless if it's raining or snowing, with the fire right there, you know, it's going to uh, keep me plenty warm. And then what's the key? A very small fire. I mean, literally just big enough to cook on is going to give me a tremendous amount of heat. I've got the wind coming from uh, basically that far corner back over this way, and the wind's going to blow in that direction. And what that'll do then is that will pick up the smoke and keep it from coming underneath the vestibule. So, that's uh, where we're at. I've still got to put everything into the, uh, the tent, get my sleeping bag and stuff laid out, and batten down the hatches because uh, it's supposed to start raining about 8 or 9 o'clock, and I hope they're wrong. I hope it drops in temp and, you know, we get some freezing rain and some some adventure so now what I've got to do is uh, put everything in there like I said batten down the hatches break up some firewood as they like to say process some wood I'm gonna make a nice big pile right down there so that I don't have to go anywhere to get it and I'm just going to do something that is top on my list for this weekend and that is to just relax so We'll be back with you in a few minutes. Okay. Got the uh, firewood cut. And got sticks piled up. And I decide, let's not do something fancy. Let's just try something really simple. So I took a dry paper towel and I shredded it up and wadded it up. And I've got it sticking in there. And now I'm just going to light it. Let's see what happens. Now you can use a flint or a, a ferro rod or, and uh, there's just you know all kinds of ways to start a fire but modern bushcraft nothing beats a good old Bic lighter yeah I've got backup Got a ferro rod and a striker if I need it. That looks like success. I need to get some water in this pot. We've got a pretty good menu for us tonight. That is probably going to take about an hour to cook. Which is okay. Because I'd like to uh, stay up for a while. I'd like to see if it's 
it's going to snow. Anyway, I don't know if you can see it. Probably not. I got a bunch of firewood. Let me show you. That's just right here by the tarp. A little fire, or not fire, but a windbreak right there. And we'll uh, keep this fire going. Aluminum foil is uh, doing its job. It's really reflecting the heat back this way. So this is gonna work great. So I'm gonna get to cooking. I'll show you what we got here in a few minutes. Okay, you can see the kettle. It's about half full of water. We've got to get it boiling. And then, right there, that foil pack that you can see, that has potatoes O'Brien, if you know what those are. It's a type of hash brown with peppers and onions. So we're cooking that, and I'll tell you about the rest of it here in a minute. Okay, you saw the kettle boiling over the fire, and what's in there are these Green Giant broccoli spears in butter sauce. So they're in a closed packet, and uh, that's in the boiling water, and that should be pretty good. And then you saw the packet of um, potatoes O'Brien and they're cooking there in the fire in the aluminum foil and then what we've got for an entree is you'll be able to see it better here in a minute but these are chicken tenders and I've got them on, I've got spices on them and we're going to put them on this grill and we're going to grill them. So that ought to be pretty good. Those have been marinating in that spice for quite a while. Let's get these put on here. tomato and herb seasoning. Oh, not tomato, I'm sorry. Garlic and herb. And I got way more than I need. Way more than I need. But Whatever. Maybe I thought I was going to be out here forever. I had to have a lot of food. paper towel here. Alright, let's see if you can see that. So now what I'll do is close this grill, which is pretty cool. Get it lined up. Get it on there. Lock it down. Let 
flip those two or three times, four or five probably. Let me show you. Okay. So while those are cooking, I'll be getting everything else ready. Well, there's my dinner cooking. Got the chicken on the grill. Got the potatoes in the aluminum foil. And got broccoli in the hot water. Just about. 10 minutes it'll be done and I'm ready for dinner. See if I can get these out of here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, those are gonna be good. Yes sir. See them? Broccoli spears and butter sauce. Then we got got the potatoes. We got the chicken. Goodness, it's going to be time to eat. Let's get this done. A few sticks on the fire. So I'll have a warm dinner in more ways than one. Potatoes are good. Chicken's good. Mm. Good stuff. So I'll recap, grilled chicken tenders, potatoes O'Brien, which is a type of hash brown with peppers and onions, and broccoli spears and butter sauce. I don't know if I'd call it gourmet. Pretty fancy for out in the woods. And a good hot meal on a cold night. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna eat. We'll try to stay up until it starts snowing.
enjoy a little bit of that and then uh, go to bed. Hopefully wake up with some snow. Let's see if the coal stayed dry. Yeah, a tiny little bit of heat, but not enough to get a fire started off of it. Looks like we had some snow. You can see a little hint of it out there. But mostly sleet and rain from about 11 o'clock until about 6 this morning. Okay, I got a confession to make. When I uh, woke up this morning, I uh, was intending to film, and uh, <laughs> quite honestly, I had to pee so bad I had to get up. So, you know, most of the videos have the guy waking up saying, hey, good morning, but uh, not this time. But, good morning. And uh, let me show you, now that it's daylight, what the inside of this uh, one-man tent looks like. It's pretty nice. Here you can see, uh, that's about a 20-degree bag. It's just a... Uh, stand sport nothing fancy and I knew it was going to be uh, really damp and cold so I took that reflector and I put it on this side and I got a couple of uh, that's my inflatable and that's just a foam pad I brought my full size pillow that's a pretty neat thing. It's a crank lantern. You can crank it a couple hundred times and it'll last, you know, quite a while. It doesn't give off a tremendous amount of light, but enough that you can see to get up, you know, or find stuff in the, in the tent. I had storage boxes to keep things dry. I put all of my... Uh, cooking stuff in that one and over here on this side that's where I had all the tarps and stuff and then I brought this uh, there so let me push this back over here where we can see a little better yeah this is one of those collapsible seats that's what I sat in most of the night last night. So, sat here by the fire and enjoyed a great dinner. But now the part that, uh, now the part that's not fun, breaking down and heading to the house. I'm going to make some coffee and uh, get that going and uh, have a cup of coffee and I guess uh, get out of here. So, I'll talk to you in a little while. Time to get to work.
Well, now all that's left is uh, dispersing my area over here, taking that down, spreading the leaves around, because uh, I think you should always practice leave no trace. So the area will basically look like it did when I found it. You know it's time to go home when you're out of coffee. Okay. I think that's got it. I came in the easy way this time. My plan was to hike in in the snow, pull in the pulk, but when there wasn't any snow with that kind of load, it would have just not been fun. So I brought the old trusty Yamaha Kodiak. Anyway, that's uh, about a uh, wrap for the weekend. It's Super Bowl Sunday. I'm gonna get home, get cleaned up, and get ready to hopefully watch Brady get beat. <laughs> Probably just pissed off half the country, but if the Chiefs aren't in it, as long as the Patriots get beat, I don't care. So, go Eagles. Okay, here we go. easier in trying to pull that thing. In the snow it's at relatively easy. You can uh, bring in a lot of gear. That's the way they do it up north. We don't get very many opportunities down here. show you. See how I crisscross the, uh, the lines? That's uh, the way you always do it, whether you're on skis, snowshoes, or just hiking. Or if you're pulling it behind a four-wheeler like I am. That way it tends to keep it straight uh, in the curves a lot better. Okay, bushcraft. You know, there's several schools of thought on it. I really enjoy the ability to take nothing and build a shelter, start a fire with a, uh, you know, a ferro rod and a spark. But the reality of it is, this is 
the year 2018, not 1789. So, you know, if, if it's always fun to go out and play. It's always fun to have survival skills. It, it's a necessity to have survival skills. And you should practice those and hone those skills. But on a weekend like today, this weekend, just uh, getting out. Getting out and enjoying something different. I've hammock camped now for five years. I haven't used a tent. Decided to give it a shot. It was supposed to be some really foul weather. Uh, even though all we had was rain and a little bit of snow. Man, what a great time. Got out, tried a few things, built a reflector, put the uh, aluminum foil against the reflector, shot all the heat back on me. Uh, the downside to that is when the fire got really hot, it started to melt it. So the key there would be to back the fire off a little bit. I built it, my uh, shelter a little close to the uh, trees that I used to build the reflector. So. I did not have to have a very big fire. I stayed toasty warm. I had a great meal. Hey, what more could you want? Get out there and try it. See you on the trail later. Hey, one more thing. I still prefer a hammock. Yes. Hammocks. It's the way to go.